When I was 15 back in 2011, posting this book online, people used to comment and say, you should make this into a movie. And I would laugh and think, yeah, right, that's never gonna happen. Hi platform, my name is Beth Rickles and you might know me as the author of The Kissing Booth. This month marks 10 years since The Kissing Booth began. So I'm gonna take you on a bit of a journey from 2011, 15 year old me starting writing The Kissing Booth, all the way to now, where I've got a third movie on the way on Netflix. So back in 2011, when I was 15 years old, I found a platform called Wattpad, which is an online story sharing platform where I discovered a community of other young people who really liked books and liked writing like I did. And at the time, I was kind of the, the shy bookish girl in my friendship group. I didn't know anyone who liked writing, so I thought it was a really weird hobby to have. So I was really excited to find a platform where other people enjoyed that as well. I was desperate to read a regular high school romance. I knew what kind of characters I wanted. I didn't want a love triangle where the girl would fall for the best friend. I didn't want vampires or werewolves because this was like Twilight era and I was just a little bit tired of that at the time because I'd read so much of it. So when I couldn't find the book I wanted to read, I began writing it and I thought, well, I'm gonna post it on Wattpad because why not? And I hated the idea of sharing my work, but the idea of doing it anonymously with complete strangers on the internet who would only say that they liked it if they actually meant it and not to be nice because they were my friend, that really appealed to me. So I began posting The Kissing Booth on Wattpad, April 2011. I didn't expect anything to come of it. I didn't even know if anyone would read it or like it. I just kind of wanted to put it out there and do this fun little project for myself. And that summer, I remember posting a really nasty cliffhanger at the end of a chapter. And I would post in the evenings so that when I woke up in the morning before school, I could check my emails, see the comments from the night before. And after I posted this particular cliffhanger, I woke up to a couple of hundred emails, which was the point where I thought, oh, maybe people actually like this book. Maybe, maybe I can write. And that moment was a huge confidence boost for me as a writer, because like I said, it, was, it wasn't something that I knew anyone else doing in real life. It was something that I kept very much to myself. And that was the moment as well where I thought, maybe I could get published one day. That would be pretty cool. Because that, that had always felt like a weird pipe dream that, you know, would be nice, but never felt achievable. And then in October, 2012, I got a message on Wattpad from an editor at Penguin Random House who said she wanted to publish The Kissing Booth. So I promptly freaked out. I'm like running into my parents, really excited about this message. Um, and this was a week after I'd sent off my university applications. I was 17 years old. So when I had the meeting with Penguin Random House, I actually had to take my dad along with me and he had to like sign contracts and things because I wasn't over 18 at the time. But I'm a, I, I kind of sat at this big table with um, an editor and a publicist and, and I was given like piles of free books and tote bags. So I was sold at that point. I was happy to kind of sign my soul away for the promise of free books. But uh, my dad was with me, so he kind of, you know, looked at the contract with a bit more of a business head on because I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't have an agent either, which wasn't something I got until a little bit later in my writing career. So I signed with Penguin Random House and The Kissing Booth was published quite soon after that. Um, I think it was about six weeks between signing the contract and the ebook coming out in the, in the December. So shortly after the book was published, I was approached to sign the film rights or option the film rights as it's called. Um, which is kind of a process where a production company will basically rent the film rights for a short period of time and if they are going to work on it they can then purchase them later down the line and actually you know, make the movie or the TV show or whatever. Um, and this company was called Comics and they were a small UK based production company who really understood the vision of The Kissing Booth and the, the feel that I was going for. And again, my dad came with me to one of these meetings. We sat with the guys in Paddington Station and they talked about putting it on an online platform, something like Amazon Prime, which wasn't kind of the household name it is now, and Netflix definitely wasn't. But I thought, you know what, I trust these guys, so I signed with them. And kind of despite the fact that I just got a book, I've got a three book deal, I was published, I signed the movie rights. Despite all of that, and it seeming really glamorous, I did want to kind of build another career as well, because I'd always thought I was going to work in IT, and I, did, I really enjoyed studying physics at school and I was gonna do a physics degree. So in spite of the fact that I got my book deal a week after uh, sending off my university applications, I went on to university, I got my physics degree. So the next couple of years, 2013 through 2016, I focused quite a lot on getting my degree, but I did have the two other books from my Penguin Random House deal come out in that time. So they're called Rolling Dice and Out of Tune. 
Um, they were YA romances, you know, heavily focused on friendship again, like The Kissing Booth. That's something that I really like to read about in books, so it's something that I like to write about as well. So this was a bit of a weird time because I was kind of juggling two different lives. I was a physics student at university and I was a writer, I was going to a couple of events, like I did the first YA LitCon. I got to go to the Queen of Teen Awards where I was nominated for that award in 2014 as well. I got to do a TEDx talk. So it, it kind of felt like I was Clark Kent and Superman a little bit, but I was sort of doing my best to keep my feet on the ground and uh, try and manage everything. And I kind of made the mistake for a little bit of taking myself very seriously as a writer. And I'm not someone who is very good at taking themselves seriously, so this kind of backfired on me and it, I found that really demotivating. So despite the fact that at this point in 2015, 16, I'd published three books, I was still very much finding my feet as a writer and as an author as well. So I ended up getting into fan fiction a lot at that time, just to sort of get into writing again, start finding my feet, figuring out again, what worked for me as a writer. So that's things like, setting myself goals like I want to hit 50,000 words on this book a month or realizing that I write best in the evenings and kind of on weekends which works very well for me now because I, I have a day job on the side of being a writer but I spent a lot of that time sort of figuring things out and getting my bearings a bit as a writer even if there wasn't a lot going on at that time with the movie or you know me creating new books to publish. So in 2017, I graduated university and I got my first job. I was working in finance, which ultimately wasn't for me. So I left not too long after starting that role. But at the same time, the filming had started on Kissing Booth as a movie. And up until then, progress on the movie had been really slow. People would keep asking me what was going on. And I'd say, well, we have a script or they've got a director or they're gonna do it with Netflix. But it was all very small chunks of progress going on in the background and nothing that I could kind of announce or talk about. But in February 2017, I got invited out to Cape Town in South Africa where they were filming The Kissing Booth. So I got to fly out for a week and I arrive on set to see Joey King and Joel Courtney who play the main characters, Elle and Lee. They were filming the school council scene where they share the idea of running a kissing booth at the school carnival. And I couldn't quite tell if it was Elle and Lee, the characters, or Joey and Joel just goofing around because the chemistry was so perfect and I just remember absolutely freaking out and thinking oh my god this is my book come to life and I don't think I could have walked in on that first day to a better scene because I was just immediately immersed in the fact that this was my world that I'd created and in general it was just the most magical week that I've ever experienced because I was only there for a short time but I spent every spare second I had on set and hanging out with the cast and the crew and everyone was so lovely and so welcoming, which I was a little bit worried about because I, they'd already started filming when I arrived. And it was absolutely the most magical week that I've ever experienced because it's, it was just, like I said, so surreal to see my book coming to life right in front of my eyes. And it didn't matter how many times they filmed the same scene over and over and over again, and then moved the cameras and did it all for another half hour. You know, I was just, absolutely enraptured i was there was there was a couple of emotional scenes that they filmed and i cried at every take because i was just so consumed by it and so in the moment plus i got to film my cameo so i got to dress up as um, a 1920s flapper girl for the birthday party which is a big costume party scene at the end of the film and uh, that was really weird when the film did come out because i got to sort of point the screen and say oh that that's me singing happy birthday to my characters which would you know just people in my head for years. You know, they, they're, they're there now, they kind of feel very real. So in the meantime, between kind of going to filming and leaving my finance job, I'd taken a new job working in IT, which is still what I do now. And where people used to find out that I was a writer at my day job, they would say, have you written anything I might have heard of? And I'd say, well, I've written like teen romance, um, it's called The Kissing Booth, and I would be met with a blank stare. But after the movie came out, people would find out about me and they'd say, oh, have you written anything that I might have heard of? And I'd say, you know, the kissing booth, like the, like on Netflix? And there would be a flash of recognition in their eyes and they'd say, oh yeah, like my daughter loves that or my wife's been watching it or even just, oh, I've, I've seen it, I've scrolled past it. And I could say, that's mine, which was just such a proud moment. And I, when I, you know, when I was 15 back in 2011, posting this book online, I just never imagined it getting to that point. People used to comment and say, you should make this into a movie. And I would laugh and think, yeah, right, that's never gonna happen. But the movie came out in 2018, was really popular. So thank you to everyone who loved it so much um, because we got greenlit for the second film then the following year. 
and I had been kind of squirreling away in the background over several years on a sequel, which took me a while to kind of work out and I'd shared the manuscript with my agent and my editors at Penguin Random House and we'd shared an earlier draft of the manuscript with the production company and our wonderful scriptwriter Vince Marcella and then luckily in 2019 I got to go out to see the filming of Kissing Booth 2 and The Kissing Booth 3 which we filmed at the same time but The Kissing Booth 3 was kept very very tightly under wraps so that was pretty difficult because I couldn't you know, talk about it for a long time. So in June 2019, I got invited back out to Cape Town once again to film Kissing Booth 2 and some scenes from Kissing Booth 3 as well. Um, so one of the really notable scenes that we did was the dance competition from the second film, which isn't in the book, but I thought was a really great, great way of adapting the book to the screen, kind of getting the tension and the dynamics and sort of spark of will they, won't they romance between Elle and the new character. Um, in the film it's Marco, but in the book he's called Levi. Um, and that was a particularly fun day on set because I sort of got turned away when I showed up. I got dropped off at this big casino we were filming the dance scene at, went to walk on um, as I did every morning <laughs> and uh, I got stopped by a security guard who asked me where I was going and who I was and I said, well, like, I'm, I'm the writer and she said, well, have you got a wristband? You need a wristband to get through. And I didn't have a wristband, no one had told me anything about this, so I had to I was, I was sent away to stand with the extras because they were keeping the security so tight because there were so many extras to film this dance scene with. I mean, hundreds of people, which was also really strange because I thought, well, it's like hundreds of people here that might not have been here if I hadn't you know, decided to post that book online all those years ago. At the same time, I was working on edits for The Kissing Booth 2. And because The Kissing Booth 3 was an original script based off the movies, I was then also working on the novelization of the third book. So the third book is a book that's based on the movie, based on the movies, based on my books, which makes it really easy to follow, right? And that was kind of a unique challenge in itself because I'd never written anything in that way before, which I actually had to do in five weeks. So I had to turn around kind of an 80,000 word manuscript in five weeks. I had to figure out, you know, which day am I gonna do the housework? And which day am I gonna write 6,000 words? Because it's a really glamorous life being a writer sometimes, you know? 2019 was also a really exciting year for me because I tried to branch out into something a bit new and a bit different by writing a new adult book. So my book, uh, It Won't Be Christmas Without You was published that year and told the story of twin sisters who were just trying to have the perfect Christmas, but in their own very different ways. And they each had like their own romance sidelines, but the book flipped between their different perspectives, which was also something that I'd not done kind of outside of fan fiction before. And you know, I got to write a book about Christmas and I'm basically Buddy the Elf when it comes to Christmas. So that was also a lot of fun. Which brings me now to 2020, which did start out as a very exciting year for The Kissing Booth. Um, so The Kissing Booth 2, Going the Distance, was finally, finally published after seven years of me working on it on and off in different, different versions, different edits, different stages of edits, like, you know, copy edits and line edits and everything. The Kissing Booth 2 was published in January and it was quickly followed in March for World Book Day by a short story called The Kissing Booth Road Trip, which was just a little spin-off story for The Kissing Booth 2 um, that followed Elle and Lee and Noah on spring break. And of all the parts of my Kissing Booth journey, doing a World Book Day book was something that felt really special to me because, you know, I can remember really clearly being a kid, grabbing my World Book Day token at school, dressing up as my favorite character, deciding which book I deemed special enough to spend my book voucher on. And then all of a sudden, I was one of those authors putting out a World Book Day book. You know, someone might have used their World Book Day token to buy my book. Of all the things that Kissing Booth allowed me to do, that was one of the things that's like up there as one of the best. A bit later in 2020, um, I got to celebrate all on my own <laughs> um, the release of Kissing Booth 2 on Netflix. So it was a weird time because obviously we were all in lockdown, but I made sure to make the most of it. I bought myself some really fancy kind of kiss shaped and heart shaped balloons. Um, got plenty of popcorn, a little bit of bubbly as well, and I had a great time watching the movie, even if it was on my own. But I guess that's the power of social media because I got to hang out with a lot of my fans at that time as well. And I guess that brings me to 2021 and 10 whole years of The Kissing Booth. It's been an absolute whirlwind and a complete roller coaster of a journey because, you know, I never expected anything to happen from it. I would have been happy, and I was happy <laughs> for a while when like seven people were reading my book and said they couldn't wait for the next chapter. That was the best feeling in the world for me. And it was so motivating, it was so encouraging, really helped me build my confidence as a writer. And then all of a sudden, 
you know, I look back now with the third movie on the way later this year, the third book as well coming out at the same time as the movie, although we don't have a date fixed for either of those just yet. Meaning that The Kissing Booth has become a five book, three movie series as of later this year. Um, I've published a couple of other books, like I mentioned my Christmas book. I've got another new adult book that I'm working on at the minute, which I actually started in lockdown. Um, and again, on Wattpad called Lockdown on London Lane, which is a sort of collection of short stories of 20 somethings all stuck in the same apartment building on lockdown for a week. And actually that one feels like it's come really full circle because last year I just really missed that sense of community and connection. And you know, I'm quite an extrovert. So I decided I'm gonna write a book because that's the only way I'll know, I know how to deal with all of this weirdness that's going on at the minute. And I'm gonna post it on Wattpad because why not? And I, you know, it's gonna be exciting to see if anyone likes it and if anyone's gonna read it. And people did, and now actually it's getting published next year as a paperback. And that is still as exciting as when it happened the first time with The Kissing Booth, even though it's going to be my 10th book by that point. So I hope that's given you a bit of an insight into what 10 years of The Kissing Booth looks like and 10 years of a writing career looks like too. Um, I hope that it's maybe inspired you to go after your own dreams as a writer. Or maybe it's just encouraged you to check out the books behind some of your favorite movie adaptations. And if I have one piece of advice for any other young writers out there, it will be to write the kind of book that you want to read because hey, you never know what could happen. Thanks so much everybody for watching. Let us know in the comments what your favorite romance from a book is. And don't forget to subscribe to Platform to check out more of their bookish content.